I hate being a Chargers fan, bro. I am always so hyped up before the season starts, and then I just get so much pain. Let's start off with the good after this game. The Chargers just lost to the Chiefs 31 to 17, and that's 17 points, man. That's the same exact number that we had against the Cowboys. We could not do anything on offense in the second half. Let's start out with the good, okay? Keenan Allen. He was open. It is so easy for him at 31 years old. He's always going to be open and he's like the old uncle just schooling everyone out there. He is such a great route runner and the value that he brings to this offense, not only catching passes, but acting as a distraction is up there for best in the NFL, man. The defense always needs to know where Keenan is on the field or he's going to make you pay. But look at his stat line man he was cooking these guys and he had only four catches on nine targets and we'll get into why when i start talking about justin herbert at the end of this video but also he should have had a touchdown on a josh palmer fake screen pass to the left side in the red zone and keenan allen faked a block and then boom went right up the field he was wide open in the end zone for a touchdown but justin herbert just missed him man he overthrew the ball and that should have been a touchdown no excuses there also joshua palmer man these last three games he's really been emerging and putting it all together with mike williams out five catches 133 yards and ran some really good routes too he mossed a Chiefs defender. I think it was Legereus Sneed, but he is emerging as a legit wide receiver too in the NFL. And we need that on offense, man. And speaking of what we need more of on offense, Quentin Johnson. <laughs> This dude was targeted only two times and caught a 20-yard pass in the first uh, half. And then in the second half, late in the game on the last drive of the game, he was thrown to and the ball was not even in contention. Justin Herbert just threw it away, it looks like. And on that one catch that he did have, did a great job of locating the ball, attacking it, and then got a little yak too on that play, giving the defenders a little shimmy. Then third and seven in the fourth quarter, he was wide open. I'm not even kidding you. When I go and do this film review, you're going to see he was wide open on the bottom of the screen and Herbert threw a contested ball instead over the middle. And then again, with six minutes to go on third and five, and he blew past the defender yet again. And Herbert threw a contested ball over the middle to Keenan Allen. The usage of Quentin Johnson is so frustrating and so confusing, man. I, I don't know if the plays are designed for Herbert to not look his direction at all, but it is a theme now that Justin Herbert consistently does not look his way even when he is open. Give him more opportunities, and if he doesn't produce, then fine. I'm wrong, but give him a shot, man. I like what I see from him. I also like what i see from darius davis and the chargers are actually giving him opportunities which is a positive change in this freaking offense he is so shifty on those end arounds and always makes that first guy miss man he is a threat to score anywhere on this field joshua kelly also running the ball pretty well he's reviving the run game a little bit gerald everett is now all of a sudden our best blocking tight end but Let's not focus on this run game. I wrote a, a, a bit about the run game. I want to talk more about the defense now. Dean Marlowe is the Chargers' best safety. He is a great one-on-one -on -one tackler. And late in the game, Staley made an adjustment. It, it was in that second half, actually. The start of the second half, Brandon Staley made an adjustment. Oh, my gosh. And he actually made Dean play closer to the line of scrimmage, taking away the middle of the field rather than playing way deep over the top. And, bro, it worked so well the chiefs only scored one time in that second half they did not have as much yardage or anything man it worked really well dean marlowe has been a great addition to this Chargers defense man huge shout out to him but now let's talk about the bad <laughs> okay bro patrick mahomes and travis kelsey were cooking and dominating this defense all day until that second half like i said where it slowed down patrick mahomes had 300 yards in the first half travis kelsey over 100 yards in the first half man wide open over the middle i'm talking like nobody within five yards of travis kelsey on top of that the defense was still 
playing these DBs way too far off the line on a lot of plays. And even Tony Romo called them out for it. Why is it that Travis Kelsey never played well against us when we had Anthony Lynn and Gus Bradley, but now with our defensive mastermind head coach, he is tearing us up every time that we play the Chiefs. We need a better pass rush, man, because Patrick Mahomes had several plays where he had way too much time to throw and improvised a couple plays to make some big plays. And then when he would scramble out of the pocket, he would typically throw to whoever Asante Samuel was covering. I don't know if that is coincidence or if Asante struggles when the QB starts playing out of the pocket and starts improvising a little bit, but that is what I noticed in this game. Asante, though, man, he had an awesome interception in that first half, and the defense had moments in this game of turnovers and great plays. They had some great uh, screen passes sniffed out. They didn't allow too much in the ground game, man, but the Chiefs' offense was too much for him in the first half and they only let up that one score in the second half so they actually played much better after that Dean Marlowe adjustment but the Chargers offense was held in check in the second half too and that ended up being the ultimate difference in this game now we're gonna talk about Justin Herbert and this is probably the biggest thing that everyone's gonna be talking about in this game Justin Herbert was under pressure for a lot of this game but after that Gerald Everett touchdown Stick with me here. The offense went as follows. Punt. End of half. It was just a nail. Interception. Which, I mean, really, it wasn't his fault. I mean, it was batted in the air. So you can argue he's got to throw it higher with that release. But it wasn't like it was a bad read and throw right to a Chiefs player. After that interception in the red zone, punt, 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 interception. That was the entire Chargers offense after that Gerald Everett touchdown. That is terrible. You got to have a, I mean, we do have a quarterback that can do better than that. Why are we playing like this against the Chiefs defense who, let's be honest, they're not as good as the Cowboys. They're not an elite defense. They're not one of the best in the league, although they are playing better than they have in previous seasons. This Chiefs team still goes where Patrick Mahomes takes them. It's not like this defense is leading their team. You need to be able to score more with a guy like Justin Herbert on your team and have more than 17 points and be locked down in the second half, bro. There were throws that Justin missed and reads that he was late on, but I am more concerned with how he is not targeting the open guys on third down and forcing it over the middle to Keenan Allen. It is so predictable for the ball to go to Keenan Allen on third down that if he isn't open then you should not force it and you should go to the next read okay move on from Keenan if he is not open don't try to force it to him because now it is really making this offense suffer Justin Herbert is under pressure so much but his pocket presence is next level man it is so good and for an elite quarterback I know I say that a lot but he is man top three in this league elite quarterback like him there really should not be an excuse all right he simply needs to play better and be a leader on this team lead these guys lead the offense to a scoring drive like Patrick Mahomes does for the Chiefs like you saw late in this game went out and scored in that late possession he's just got to lead these guys man I, I mean this is still your leader and at some point he's got to go out and win a football game in spite of of all of the crud and all this crap that's going out around him and that includes the coaching too okay it's not just the offensive line letting up pressures the run game that's been pretty non-existent lately some bad play calling and the coaching staff it feels like everything's going against him this feels like philip rivers this feels like this is the second coming of philip rivers and being a chargers fan is so bad for my health i should probably stop doing it and pick up smoking like it's just my heart man i've taken years off of my life this is the most abusive relationship i've been in we're two and four and this team is i'm gonna be honest with you we just don't look that great <laughs> and we've got star players man i just think brandon staley should not be the coach after this year i know i'm pretty emotional right now but i just really strongly believe that you can't keep him around we got so many star players by the way where's joey bosa where's Duran james oh okay you know what i'm gonna end this video right there we're two and four we got the bears coming up next that should be a dub that should be a win i'm gonna go to that game hopefully i'll see some of you guys there man but bolt 
up. Stay bolted up. It's not like we have any other option, right? I'm never going to be a fan of any other team. I'm a Chargers fan, and I'm proud, and I'm sad. Make sure to like the video and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content, man. Oh, another rough one. Yep.